Some health professionals warn addiction to anti-anxiety medication is a growing epidemic. Roughly one in eight American adults use this kind of medication, and some can experience harsh withdrawal symptoms when trying to quit. In a new episode of 60 Minutes Plus, correspondent Seth Doan spoke with one young woman about her struggle. We met Grace on day 240 of a grueling process of trying to wean herself off an anti-anxiety drug she was taking on doctor's orders. How is it to still have to take it? It's honestly miserable. Um, it's a little bit, well, no, it's definitely a mind game because I want nothing to do with this, yet in order to function and get off of it, I have to keep taking it. She was 16 when a psychiatrist gave her a typical starter dose of Xanax of 0.25 milligrams after she says she was physically and sexually assaulted. At her highest dose, she told us she was prescribed up to 24 times that amount, 6 milligrams. Did your doctor express any concerns about upping the dose? <laughs> no, never. Did your doctor talk to you about problems getting addicted? Never. What did your doctor say? She just wrote it to me and gave it to me. And you thought what? This doctor's trying to help me because my anxiety disorder is getting so much worse. So I must need what she's giving me. Grace told us her doctor also never warned her about the challenges of coming off the drug, what's known as tapering. What does it feel like to taper? It's night sweats, night terrors, massive rebound panic attacks. I set a timer of 15 minutes to tell myself, let's survive this 15 minutes and then it'll be done. And then when the 15 minutes is up? Uh, I hope to God it's done, but it's usually not. Um, so I usually reset that timer. Wow, Seth Doan uh, joins us now. Seth, listen, what are benzos and why are you taking a look at anti-anxiety medication? Benzos are this group of drug benzodiazepines. They're the, the those those uh, common Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, Ativan. They're all part of this group of drugs, but one Americans are, are prescribed them. You mentioned that 91 million prescriptions in 2020. And what we found is there is a subset of users who have no idea that they can get as addicted as they do and who have a real problem weaning themselves off the drug. You heard Grace O'Keefe talking about, there you see her there, you heard her talking about that process of tapering, just how difficult it was. So she was given at 16 years old after a, a traumatic incident, given a kind of typical of 0.25 milligram, and she was, she was upping that over the course of seven years with her psychiatrist and ultimately was a six milligrams. She's in this process of trying to come off of the drug, something that will take her probably about a year to complete. Now, you hear a lot of people say, oh, I have anxiety, I suffer from anxiety, but true sort of diagnosed anxiety, you know, it feels like you're going to die. And so when I hear her talking about trying to get off of the drug and having these massive anxiety attacks over and over and over again, it, it must be debilitating. What have you heard from the makers of Xanax about this? Beatrice, who are the makers of Xanax, who reached out to them, of course, working on this story, and they said, listen, this has been proven safe and effective. It is a drug uh, that works. It has benefited millions of patients. They say that they are updating their warning as guidance evolves. And they say it's also imperative for medical professionals to work with patients and to advise them both during the course of treatment, but also ahead of being prescribed these medications to be warned of the risks. And that was really what we were these online support groups where we found thousands of people who were really turning to one another for help in, in weaning off. And they said uh, that they felt that they had not been adequately warned by our doctors. And we're hearing, you know, echoes in some ways of the other prescription drug epidemic with open spoke with Dr. Anna Lemke, a, a a doctor at Stanford who says that she sees a lot of the same similarities here with the opioid crisis. In terms of what, what are the parallels she sees? 
Well, she says that this addiction, which is, she believes, not really widely understood, she said one of the things that you don't think is that you can get addicted to something that's prescribed by your doctor. She said you, <laughs> addiction is addiction. You can get uh, addicted to something as easily uh, that is prescribed as something that you might find on the street. She also notes that in 2013, when these benzo prescriptions really were at their peak, if you can believe it, 91 million in 2020 is, is a slight downward trend. But she said often what they find is addiction is this chronic issue. You might see doctors maybe prescribing this less, but in some cases you have some patients who've gone to find it through other ways. We spoke with Lil Zan, this Zan is short yeah. for Xanax. He's a rapper who sung a great deal about a Xanax and started a typical start 0.5 milligrams and at one point was taking up to 50 times that amount. Of course, that could not be prescribed by a doctor, so he was finding dealers on the street. There you see, he started this uh, thing called Xanarchy to kind of speak out against, to speak out against uh, Xanax. Uh, but he was saying he, what was once prescribed by a doctor, when he couldn't get that much, he turned to the street and to dealers. Wow, uh, Seth Doan, thank you so much. Thank you. So, so you can watch Seth's 60 Minutes Plus report right now on Viacom CBS streaming service. It's called Paramount Plus.